The question is, find, if possible, a, the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared minus 4x all on x cubed minus 2, b, the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x cubed minus 4x all on x cubed minus 2, c, the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x to the power of 4 minus 4x all on x cubed minus 2, and d, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 1 on x. Now a, b and c all look very similar, in fact the only difference appears to be the power on that x that's next to the 3. So I have a feeling that whoever wrote this is trying to make me learn something about what happens when that power changes. So I should take note of my answers and see if I can apply them to other kinds of questions. Let's start with a. a. The limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared minus 4x all on x cubed minus 2. Okay, well that x to approaches infinity means that I'm looking at um, what happens as x gets larger and larger and larger. So I want to know if this um, value here, this formula, approaches any particular number as x gets larger. If um, it just gets bigger and bigger, or um, bigger and bigger and negative as x goes to infinity, or it wiggles around back and forth between two numbers and never goes anywhere useful, uh, then the limit doesn't exist. But it might, um, you can imagine your graph just slowly leveling off and getting closer and closer to a particular number as x gets larger and larger. And that's what will happen if the limit exists. Well, let's think about it. The biggest power on the top is x squared, and the biggest power on the bottom is x cubed. Now, x cubed is much, much bigger than x squared when x is large, so I reckon that the limit's going to be zero because the bottom is much, much bigger than the top, and so we'd get closer and closer to zero. Now, how do I show it? Well, one trick I've learned from watching other people do this is to divide the top and bottom by the largest power of x that's anywhere in that fraction. Okay, so let's divide the top and bottom by x cubed. So that would be equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared on x cubed minus 4x on x cubed over 1 on x cubed, sorry, x cubed on x cubed minus 2 on x cubed. Okay, well, I could do the limit of every part of that separately. As x, well, let me just cancel it out first. The limit as x approaches infinity of 3 on x minus 4 on x squared over 1 minus 2 on x cubed. Now, as x approaches infinity, so as x gets larger and larger, 3 on x approaches 0, 4 on x squared approaches 0, and 2 on x cubed approaches 0. So I get the limit of the top is 0, the limit of the bottom is 1. Both limits exist, and the limit of the bottom isn't 0. So the whole limit does exist and is 0 minus 0 over 1 minus 0. So that's 0 over 1, and 0 divided by 1 is 1. Oh. Do you mean 0 divided by 1 is 0? So as I suspected, because the bottom is much bigger than the top, um, the limit is 0. OK, let's try the next one. B. Well, in this one, the powers on the top is the same as the power on the bottom. so. I really don't know what's going to happen here, so we might just try the same trick and see what happens. Limit as x approaches infinity of 3x cubed minus 4x over x cubed minus 2. Alright, the limit as x approaches infinity and we'll divide everything by x cubed again because that's the biggest power that's there, so we get 3 minus 4 on x squared over 1 
minus 2 on x squared, x cubed actually. Alright, and as x gets larger and larger, 4 on x squared approaches 0 and 2 on x cubed approaches 0, so we get 3 on 1, which is 3. Okay, so it seems that when the powers on the biggest power on the top and bottom is the same, it just comes out to the coefficients of those powers. Okay, I'll start a new page. All right, now let's do part C. C. The limit as x approaches infinity of 3x to the power of 4 minus 4x over x cubed minus 2. Well, what's that equal to? Alright, well, let's just do what we did with the others. The limit as x approaches infinity, or the biggest power now um, is x to the 4, so we should divide everything by x to the 4 this time. So 3x to the 4 divided by x to the 4 is 3. 4x divided by x to the 4 is 4 on x to the 4 x to the 3, x cubed divided by x to the 4 is 1 on x, 2 divided by x to the 4 is 2 divided by x to the 4. Okay, so now the limit of the top is 3 and the limit of the bottom is 0. Since both of the limits exist and the limit on the bottom is 0, the total fraction limit doesn't exist. So DNE since the limit of numerator not equal, sorry, exists and the limit of denominator exists and is zero. Okay, so that one doesn't exist. So let's just look at that for a minute. So in the first one, in the first one, in the first one, I had the power on the top was smaller than the power on the bottom and the limit came out to zero. And I reckon that's going to happen every time because that means the bottom is much, much bigger than the top when x gets large. In the second one, the power on the top was the same as the power on the bottom, and it came out to be the leading coefficients divided by each other, and that's probably going to happen as well. And in the third one, the power on the top was bigger than the power on the bottom, and the limit didn't exist. And I suspect that's going to happen as well every time, because if the top is bigger than the bottom, then um, it'll all just come out as um, being big overall. So um, there's some morals for next time I try these things out. All right, now let's have a look at this last one, D. Well, I'm wondering why it's even in this list, because it doesn't look at all like the others. Um, so, for one, it's sine, but more importantly, it's x approaches zero and not x approaches infinity. But I suppose as x goes to zero, one on x goes to infinity. So maybe it is a limit at infinity after all. So let t equal one on x. So as x goes to infinity, t goes to zero. So the limit as x goes to zero of sine one on x is the limit, or x goes, whoops, sorry, as x goes to, as x goes to zero, t goes to infinity. 
Right, that's better. So x goes to 0 is the same as t goes to infinity, so we put that in. 1 on x uh, is the same as t. Now that limit doesn't exist because as t goes to infinity, sine just continues to wiggle back and forth between um, 1 and minus 1, so it doesn't actually go to any value in particular. So it does not exist. So it doesn't exist for a different reason the other one doesn't exist. The other one didn't exist because that number actually got bigger and bigger and bigger as x goes to infinity. This one doesn't exist because it doesn't go anywhere. It just goes back and forth between two numbers. And now I've done all four, so the question is finished.